So my perfect steam pudding yep. is going to be a real classic ginger pudding. Mm. It's going to have a really delicious ginger syrup that's yep. going to be spiked with a really, really amazingly potent, actually, ginger liqueur. So I'm doing something lighter, um, a little bit more sort of refreshing, I suppose, and doing lemon, lemon sponge pudding. But I'm going to line my bowl with um, slices of um, confit lemon, lemon which is Ooh. cooked very slowly in the stock syrup, and then the old favourite lemon curd as well. Yep. So just to start with, I'm going to um, get my stock syrup on. So it's about 200 grams of sugar, 100 grams of water. Um, just to enhance that lemoniness, lemongrass. That's really clever, huh? Yeah. It's my, one of my favourite ingredients. It smells amazing, doesn't it? It's just fantastic, yeah. isn't it? But is that traditional? Uh, I think it will enhance the lemoniness, which is what, it, what it's all about. I mean, I wouldn't... It's more citrusy, isn't it? It's yeah. really lemony. It's really wonderful. So bash it, obviously, to release the flavours and then just chop it up. Mark adds the lemongrass to the sugar and water, along with finely sliced lemons and leaves to gently cook until they have softened, before turning his attention to the sponge. He starts by whisking softened butter. So this is effectively where you get your air into the mixture. So you want to cream this really, really well, and this helps a really light and also buttery sponge. Put in your um, sugar and then incorporate it, and you want to get this kind of, like, a pale kind of uh, white colour, and that will, you know, mean it's creamed down properly, the sugar's mixed in with all the butter, and you've got lots of air in there. I think uh, what you're saying is a really good point. I think this is one of the keys to good baking generally, so, you know, just making sure that you really beat the, almost the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and make yeah. it as white as you can get it. Right, now that's that done, nice and uh, mixed in, and now the eggs. Mark cracks three eggs into a jug and whisks so he can gradually incorporate them into the creamed butter and sugar so it won't curdle. The butter almost it doesn't want to mix with the eggs, which is why you have to do a little bit at a time and almost just kind of give it a bit of a base. He adds the egg bit by bit and whisks the mixture until it's really light and fluffy. Right, so once that's done like that, and then we basically want to just sort of fold the flour in. So you put all the flour in and uh, you just want to fold that in gently. So obviously you don't want to beat any air out of, uh, of the mix you've just made now. So sponge puddings? Yes. Well and truly back in vogue. Oh, I think so, yeah. People think of it as an old-fashioned kind of heavy dessert, but it's not at all. It's really lovely and really light. Extra punch of lemon. We've got the zest um, going in and the juice of one lemon. And, uh, and then yeah, look at that. That's turn this juicy. over and then you use that as your little catcher. Clever. So you're, uh, and you can see that's a nice, lovely kind of mix. And you want it, what they always call, what my mum would say, is a, a dropping consistency. Your mix just <laughs> yeah. sort of should drop yeah, that's perfect, off there like it? that. Yeah. Right, so that's my base down there nicely. Mark's comfy lemons need to cook until they're softened and then cool in the syrup. So he brings out a jar that are already cooked and cooled. And you've got this incredible lemon syrup as well, which um, mm. I would, um, you know, save back as well and use, and you can spoon that over. Have a drum. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. He lines the buttered and floured pudding bowl with a layer of the preserved lemons. Would all this extra attention to detail give Mark's pudding the edge? Now, this, again, is another secret weapon of mine. Lemon curd. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. But um, I like to have a massive lump of that in the bottom, a couple of spoonfuls in there. Right, now, the sponge goes in. So you want to gently sort of put that in. And you kind of want to do it sort of two-thirds of the way up the bowl. Spot on, right? Yeah. Right, so we have a, um, a buttered parchment on some foil. And um, if you see there, I've just folded that over. And what that does is gives it room so as it, it can rise. Right, so over here. Mark securely ties the pudding up and it's ready to be cooked. Um, I've got simmering water in here and a little ramekin turned up so it doesn't actually sit in the water because you obviously oh. want this steamed. Bamboo steamers are perfect for this if you've got one big enough. So you just sit that on the uh, on the ramekin and then put a lid on. And as long as you keep the water in there topped up, you can't really overcook it. With Mark's pudding safely onto steam, it's over to Gizzy and her ginger sponge pud. She starts by making the sauce with the syrup from a jar of stem ginger. And then I'm going to go for some golden syrup. Mm. Good old golden syrup. So it's going to have that um, syrup pudding feel yeah, to it. Yeah. Now this. Mm. It's a ginger liqueur. Mm. This is probably not the most conventional, conventional ingredient. It just adds that extra warmth, that extra gingeriness, and it just makes it a bit more adult. And if you can't find that, can you use just, like, a good ginger wine or something? Good ginger wine would be fantastic. Gizzy squeezes in the juice of a lemon and her sauce is left to cook down. And all you do is you just bring that whole thing up to the boil and you turn it off. That's it. And is this, like, Melting uh, it together, essentially. Is this something you've had over your, sort of, past, a family recipe, something your nan made, or...? Yeah, I mean, this is... Do you know what? This is one of my mum's 
classic recipes that she makes for a marmalade pudding, and I've just sort of like altered it with ginger, and yeah. we've been doing it for a while actually, and it's just mm. so popular because, like I said, it's one of those things that's so emotive. Everybody knows and loves this sort of cooking. Absolutely. While the ginger sauce ticks away, she can get going with her sponge mix. Same as you, we're yep. going to do um, the beating in method. Yes. Butter, sugar, equal quantities, and then we're going to add in our eggs one by one. Yes. Gizzy slowly adds the eggs into the mix, then leaves her sponge whizzing away to make it super light and airy. Next, she chops the stem ginger to add to the mix. OK, so... This can go off. Yep. And I am literally going to put in... Now, this is self-raising flour, sifted as well. OK. We're just going to pour that in. Yep. This is my sneaky ingredient. It is actually very, very old school to do it uh, with a few breadcrumbs. Creates okay. a bit more lift. Yep. Um, I'm going to put some ginger in there as well. So this is just some ground ginger. I'm going to put a bit more raising agent. Yeah. So even though it's self-raising flour, mm. I'm going to put a touch more um, baking powder. Wow. So it's going to be really light. Gizzy grates in the rest of the lemon zest and squeezes the juice into the sponge mix. Then she adds the chopped stem ginger. And then more syrup. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, you want to get as much of this flavour as you can yeah, get. Yeah, Because it's yeah. just wonderful. And then... Some milk. Oh, and that just lightens and I'm just, the whole Yeah, thing. lightens the whole thing. A final whisk to combine, and Gizzy has an unusual ingredient to add to the sponge mix. And then just a tiny bit of a balancer with some salt. And well, that's really interesting. And I, and, I, and I damn you for not letting reminding me to put something. <laughs> because it does, salt uh -huh. makes a big difference to the flavour of um, puddings like this, doesn't uh -huh. it? It really brings it out. Even in sweet puddings, uh, it is essential, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Gizzy's sponge mix is done. Now she can assemble her pudding. What I've done here is I've, I've just buttered yep. and not floured. Okay. So yours was floured as well, which is really yeah, interesting. Yeah, but uh, it's just me being trying to be ultra safe, really. Um, um, it's fine, butter's fine. Any protective seal there. We are going to put in a bit of our syrup. Mm. I'm going to very, very, very gently mm -hmm. pour this in. It's going yep. to make a splosh to begin with. And you'll see it looks like it's all going to come up, up the sides. And it does initially. That's a and good then, thing, yeah, but then you want it to sort of seal in yeah. the sponge and then it will, as it cooks, it will drop back up to the bottom. There's, all of that liquid will hit the bottom again. She covers the pudding with foil and buttered parchment and she has a nifty trick to ensure the pudding is easy to get out of the pan. Okay. And, and then I'm just going to sloop this underneath. Yeah. And it just makes it easier... To lift up. To lift out. Well, that looks very good. Very professional. OK, so we're just going to very, very, very gently pop that in. Mm -hmm. Trying to get that on that. We've also got something to hold it up off the bottom. Yeah. And then we just pop the lid on. And I'm going to let that cook for about an hour and a half. Yep. Um, and then, yeah. So the waiting game starts now, then. Yikes. Gizzy's hoping her ginger pud will win over the judges, while Mark's convinced his light lemon sponge will do the trick. 